It's time to watch episode 54 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Episode 53 ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We've got the battle between Mustang and Envy, and then Hawkeye, who is actually Envy disguised as Hawkeye, pops up. There's a gun pointed at Mustang's head. What's going to happen next? How's this battle going to play out? Is Mustang going to be able to defeat Envy and help people accomplish the necessary goal without burning his own heart in the fires of vengeance? Will I be able to refrain from burning my own heart in the fires of vengeance? Because I loved Maze Hughes and I'm pretty miffed at Envy my own darn self. So let's see what happens. And it looks like we're going straight into the episode with no OP. The, it's taking us back to the conclusion of the Ish Fallen War in 1909. Oh, and we're seeing Hawkeye and uh, Mustang here. Nice little flashback with those two. I feel like maybe we've seen something from this era before, a moment similar to this. Oh, she's bearing an Ish Fallen child, showing her own humanity here at the war. Perhaps some of the guilt she feels about what a mistress did here in Ishval. So yeah, this kind of terrible wartime experience is the initial bond between those two. Oh, I kind of forgot about the tattoo on her back. Lifelong pain of needing to atone, something for which she knows she cannot atone. Oh, oh, asking him to burn that tattoo off her back. That is vicious, isn't it? She wants to destroy those secrets on her back. Those secrets that hold keys to destruction and war and that sort of thing. Oh. I don't think you can inflict pain on her to burn the tattoos off. I never want to have to have a tattoo burned off. I'll tell you that right now. Sounds like an awful thing to go through. <laughs> look at that look on Mustang's face. His eyeballs are huge. His jaw is slack. He doesn't know how to answer a request like that. Somebody asking you to burn their back? <laughs> Came here to chew bubblegum and burn backs. And I'm all out of backs to burn. Oh no. Wow! That was heavy. And also <laughs> made me cringe in pain a little bit thinking about getting my own back burned by alchemy flames or flames of alchemy, however you want to put it. But here, now we do get the OP. And during this OP, I like to remind folks that I do have a Patreon now. I know a lot of you are already members of the Patreon, and I thank you for that. But if you're, you know, you're not a member, you're just curious, you want to see what's going on over there, you want to check it out. Well, there is a link in the video description. Beyond the Inferno is the name of this episode. So I think we are going to get to see what happens after Mustang does a whole lot of burn in here. That, of course, will be the Inferno. All right, here we are with the gun to the back of his head from fake Hawkeye. Oh! Oh, I never even thought about the idea of Envy pretending to be Mustang. And then there's the whole RZA thing. Oh, I never... That outsmarted me! I'd sit here thinking I'm outsmarted the show. The show outsmarted me. <laughs> but nobody outsmarts Hawkeye. And I love it. Oh, man, this was great. This is not what I expected to see. And she's strapped up with pistols everywhere. But the bullets... The bullets are little more than a nuisance. All you're doing there, Mustang, is maybe buying some time, which there's nothing wrong with that. But, uh... Uh, you'd think all those gunshots would definitely catch Mustang's attention, though, when he would come to check it out. Oh, no. Hawkeye's all wrapped up. Oh, and there's the flame alchemy that we've been waiting for. Mustang has made himself known. Oh! 
Oh, look at that. All four limbs burning at once. I mean, Envy is just at Mustang's mercy here. Mustang is an awesomely impressive, powerful alchemist. I can't believe how much I underestimated Mustang in the first few episodes of this show. Oh my goodness, he is the man. Probably apex alchemy here with Mustang. I mean, I've not seen what Hohenheim can do if he unleashes, but it's hard to see him doing more than Mustang here. Come on, another snap. Another snap, just like flicking that big lighter. Oh, ho, 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 ho. paused until Envy showed a little fire, pun fully intended. Oh, my goodness. Look at that two hand snap back and forth. Z formation. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Just boom, boom. Now he is showing the kind of viciousness and satisfaction on his face that goes with a, a desire for revenge. And taking joy in inflicting the pain on the person who he has this vendetta against. And it looks like Envy is... Oh, the little slug is still there. And of course, May still wants that little slug. Put it in a jar again. Oh, I love the little slug. <laughs> oh, under his boot. Under his boot. May needs it. Don't squish it. Let May have it back in a jar says that envy means jealous, and not to be pedantic, but when I was in school, they taught us different meanings for envy and jealousy. Jealousy is a fear of losing something you have. Envy is a desire to have something you don't have. That's what I was taught. I, I don't know if that's right or not. Oh, he's going to burn the slug? Whoa. Hawkeye's trying to save him from himself. Yeah, you've defeated the enemy. No need to be an executioner. I like this. Hawkeye is saving Mustang from himself. And look at that evil look on his face. And what is this, Edward? Yeah, go Edward. Give May the slug back so she can take it to Jing. Scar's words of wisdom really shaking everybody to their core. Come on, Mustang. You can't use your flame alchemy on full metal. He's your buddy. He's your little buddy. Oh, man. Not satisfied to win, but must inflict pain. Not even satisfied to execute, but wants to torture. Oh, boy. He's telling him you're turning into something more cruel and evil and tyrannical and despotic than the Fuhrer whom you hope to replace. It's like the whole power corrupts absolutely thing. Oh, having flashbacks to his actual beliefs and morality from when he was a, a young guy who first set his sights, his idealistic sights on reforming the country and becoming the Fuhrer. Whoa, Scar! Scar said, hey, we're the same. I'm not going to stand in your way, but you need to at least acknowledge what you're doing. It needs to be a conscious decision to go down this path. And not one you claim you stumbled by not knowing where it led. But Hawkeye's not so forgiving. She's willing to pull that trigger. Oh. This is something you're doing for totally selfish reasons. Your vindication that you're searching for, your revenge is a very selfish thing, and it's not to help anyone. It doesn't even help Maze, God rest his soul. It's not what Maze would want you to do either. 
Oh man, heartbreaker looking back at May's shoes. And the impact that that side character has had on this whole story is phenomenal. Such a well-written story, well-written character. It's probably got to be my first character profile when I start doing those, is May's Hughes. That and Keith Shadows from Attack on Titan. Oh, wow. Telling Hawkeye, go ahead and shoot me. Is Mustang turning evil? Is he a hero who's being consumed with hate? Burning his own heart? We've seen that in other stories. Uh, at least he's still internally conflicted. Got his rage out harmlessly down that uh, tunnel. Hopefully harmlessly. All right. Thank goodness he's still got his human attachment. Cares about Hawkeye. And he's being brought back from the edge. Thank goodness. I don't want to lose another hero. I can't handle any more of that. I'm talking to you, Attack on Titan. Oh. His moment of rage is cleared. His head is cleared. He's not going to make her shoot him. She's going to put her gun down. And then he's going to say, fooled ya! And he's going to snap his fingers and burn Edward. No, that's not going to happen. He sincerely realized what he was about to do and what he was becoming. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Envy? Oh my goodness, you should probably be keeping your mouth shut right about now. Oh my goodness, that one Mustang to go back and burn the little slug all of a sudden. Oh my goodness. Envy! You are a jerk! Just squish him till he pops there, Edward. Oh boy. He, uh... He, uh... Envy just can't understand reconciliation at all, can he? Just trying to stir up old... Old, uh... I don't know what you call it. Old beefs that have been settled. You're what we call a poop stirrer where I come from. You're just the stick that stirs the poop when everybody's trying to calm down. <laughs> just throw Envy in a sock and tie it up so nobody can hear what he's saying. It just sounds like mumbling. Oh my goodness, shut up! Whew. All right, I think Envy's finally giving it a rest. Guess the homunculus just can't understand the human experience. And how necessary reconciliation is for survival sometimes. <laughs> that is the Envy that defines Envy. I love it. I love it. Edward points out that the envy from which envy's name is derived is the envy of humans and human nature and their ability to rise up and to reconcile and to move on and to forgive and all those sorts of things that a homunculus just can't seem to do. Oh, wow. Kind of having like this mental flashback to lots of human interactions there for Envy. Well, this is kind of a touching emotional moment I wasn't expecting here. Strangely making me proud of being a human when uh, not too long ago I was just seeing how I had kind of lost faith in humanity. <laughs> oh... Oh, squishy, squishy slugs trying to get... Ah! Bit the finger? Come on. Take Envy and throw Envy in a jar. Let Mei take him back to Jing. That's what Mei needs to help her family. Is Envy dying here?
Oh man, making me have pity for the slug. Might be the first time in my life I've ever pitied a little green slug villain. He's also a smart like that wouldn't quit running its mouth a minute ago. Oh wow. The tears of a homunculus. Those must have some magical value. Is that it? Is this the last gasp for envy? Dying in humiliation? Humiliating to be understood by a pipsqueak. This is a great moment with some great lines. Raising some great points and great emotion. The whole mixed up emotion of envy here and the way that Edward cracked that code and shared it is some brilliant, brilliant work. Oh! Pulling out the Philosopher's Stone. Interesting. Is that like suicide, essentially? Oh, wow. Just crushed it. And that's it. Envy is dusted. Oh, that is haunting. That farewell to Edward calling him by name. So there's a way that Mustang was able to get his revenge and not lose his humanity in the same same moment. Written herself into a difficult situation, but managed to... Oh, we're back with the Armstrongs and Sloth. <laughs> I love the explanation I got for Sloth. Is he's the fastest of them all. He's just too lazy to use his power. And that is why he's Sloth. I loved it. Okay. What are they going to do with him? <laughs> Just call it Mustang. He's the resident homunculus crusher. Oh, wow. They got orders to shoot Armstrong? Oh, General Armstrong. Not the brother. <laughs> the general that they had orders to shoot has just taken command. And now they got to fight the immortal warriors and there's no Mustang around. Oh, ho, ho! Let's go, Armstrong, the shirtless wonder, swinging that chain like a weed eater in your backyard. Oh, the green schmutz coming out of the immortal warriors. <laughs> and her command is just get rid of their jaws so they can't chew you to death. This is absolutely zombie horde they're fighting here. I mean, the, the mechanics and everything work almost identical to a zombie horde, except they're more resistant, I will say that. How's Sloth going to react to these immortal warriors? I wonder what he makes of them. Does he see them as allies or not? And he wants to kill Olivier. This will be interesting. <laughs> but he's bound by her muscle-bound shirtless brother, the strong-arm alchemist. Oh, I want to see a little fisticuffs between these two. From the old-time strong man and sloth by the way i think the sloth from goonies far more handsome oh he is pounding on major armstrong come on use that strong-armed alchemy fight back <laughs> she's belittling him as he's getting beaten down but i think it's part of his play is it like a rope-a-dope muhammad ali kind of strategy he's doing here yeah he's waiting to make his move there he goes he just made a move. Ah, oh, the gleam in his eyes. There's the knuckle dusters. The uppercut. Uh, it's like the my finest moment on Mike Tyson's punch out right there. <laughs> I like it. I forgot the shoulder was dislocated. He was waiting for the right angle to locate it again. Oh, beautiful. He looks kind of like Soda Popinski here. 
Ha ha! Hammer away at him with your pugilism skills there. Get him, Armstrong. Left, left, right, right. Cross! Uppercut hook! Oh, man. He is pounding him like a hunk of beef in the first Rocky movie. Oh, fire up those knuckle dusters. It's a little alchemy time. Oh, ho, ho! Impelled him on spikes galore. That's quite the Mortal Kombat finishing move, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the collaboration of art and fisticuffs. Pugilism. The sweet science. Oh, man. It's always satisfying when you see Lieutenant Ar Major Armstrong, the strong arm alchemist, pounding on people. The shirtless wonder. Here's the tank firing away. Just going wild downtown with the tank. Firing on the central stronghold, I guess. Is that Grauman out there with the tank? Who's that out there with the tank? I know Grauman was getting some updates. He's making his way towards... Oh, it's a Briggs tank. Where the heck's Grauman? He should be around here by now. I want to see what card he's holding back to play. Uh, it's not looking good for those guys uh, in Central. This, oh, 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 we know who that is. It's Buccaneer. Yeah. <laughs> so Briggs has taken over Central. It looks like the coup is complete. So this is probably where Grauman comes in and fights our heroes. And he becomes the unexpected villain of the situation, doesn't he? Oh, wow. <laughs> Who's the tunnel digger? Oh, it's Azumi! Yes! Just a passing housewife, Azumi Curtis! That's my main lady! Yes! <laughs> she should be the king of a mistress. She should be the Fuhrer and not Mustang. Wow, what a triumphant return to the scene for Azumi Curtis. I love Azumi there. What do we have here in the closing credits? We got Hohenheim, it looks like. So what's going on here with Von Hohenheim? It's like he's wandering around looking into something. Or is this just the ED that I'm always talking through? I don't know. This looks like something's happening. Like he's facing father here. Are they going to say something? This is crazy. Hohenheim and father facing off loaned one-on-one? -on -one? Didn't bring his sons? Didn't bring anybody? Are they going to fight? Oh, man. Called him Dwarf in the Flask. All right. Oh, no. Oh, calling him the slave, calling him the dwarf. What's going to happen here? Oh, he's got the red eye like Cable from Cable and Deadpool. Was he going to absorb Von Hohenheim? Sounds like he wants to absorb Von Hohenheim here. Oh, you can't leave me hanging like that. What am I going to do until the next episode? I'm going to pull my hair out because I'm getting ready to go on vacation. So it's going to be a little while before I can watch another episode. And it's killing me. It's killing me, people. What am I going to do? I love it. Thank you. I'm proud of you for watching anime. I'm going to be out of town for a couple weeks. I'm staggering some releases, but they'll be a little sparse. When I'm back, we're going to be doing some serious catch-up, like daily up upload catch-up, because I'm so, like, hooked on this at this point, and I got some other plans for some new stuff. But I just want to say I'm proud of you for watching anime, and I'll talk to you again soon. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It really means a lot to me. If you might be interested in Patreon perks like early access to videos, uncut reaction videos, ad-free videos, and the opportunity to vote on which anime will be covered in the future, then click on the link in the video description. Thank you.